Right, well I've got the, um, the rollers in position and glued, so I've got uh, glue on the appropriate surfaces and the glue is wet at the moment. I've um, applied a bit of pressure in that direction and that direction so the rollers are seated correctly. And the reason I've got the, um, my little portable uh, granite plate set at an angle of about 45 degrees is so that we have continuous pressure in that direction and vertically so that the rollers will, will maintain contact with the, uh, the bar itself. And I'm using JB Weld, two pot adhesive and being a fluid and it's still on the fluid condition at the moment then uh, the theory is that um, the constant downward pressure will hold the rollers against the metal on the bar. Um, it's going to be some hours before it hardens so I'm um, relying on the fact that the pressure between the rollers and the bar will remain and so let's leave it overnight and um, see how we do in the morning. Okay it's next day and we seem to have been successful. The, um, the glue has set, it's hard and the rollers appear to be in contact as they should be. So what we're going to do now is measure the distance between that surface there and that one there. Now I'm fairly confident that the, um, that the surface that the um, sign bar is sitting on at the moment on the on the uh, granite uh, is at right angles to that plane and right angles to this plane so we're not going to get a significant measuring error um, we're not going to get a cosine error what I mean by that is that if we were measuring at an angle like that or like that um, and I've exaggerated then we were going to get measurement errors so what I'm going to do now is measure those surfaces uh, with my pipe gauge and with a dial gauge on the height gauge and we'll calibrate it with, um, uh, with some Joe blocks. So bear with me while I get things sorted. Right, so I've got my um, indicator set up on the uh, on the stand. Now this indicator uh, major division is a hundredth of a millimeter and each minor division is two microns so it's a pretty sensitive gauge. So what I'm going to do is measure the height of that surface there and then uh, and then ring some Joe blocks equal to that height and then we'll add a 75 mil Joe block to that stack and see whether the Joe block stack and that surface there match. Uh, it'll become more apparent when I do it. So let's measure that surface there for a start. Right, so we've got a, uh, a stack of uh, gauge blocks here equal in height to the height of that roller and we've got it as close to zero as I can get it. That's uh, 0 0.002 of a millimetre within 0 0.002 of a millimetre there. 0 0.1 there, we need to adjust that whisk up. So zero it on the Joe, on the gauge block. So there's a bit of a bit of wander from one side of the uh, gauge block to the other. That's errors in my um, Chinese granite table. But bear in mind that from there 
to there is 0.4 of a thousandth. 4 tenths. And we're about um, 0 0.8 eight, eight tenths from one side to the other of that roller. So to all intents and purposes we're, we're zeroed here. So I'm now going to put a 75, add 75 millimetres to that stack. And the top of that stack should be equal to the top of the roller. So here we have our 75 mil stack. Going to ring that to the existing, which it is. Come up to here. I hope you can see that. Try and shade it so you can. So we've got an error in the rollers from one side to the other of 3 hundredths of a millimetre, so 1.2 thousandths, that's not too bad. And our stack, so our stack is showing one hundredth above zero there. There's about a one hundredth of a millimetre difference between our stack and the rollers, and the roller, actually probably less than that. Yeah, there's about a hundredth of a millimetre between a hundredth of a millimetre between the stack and the rollers and a hundredth of a millimetre is 0.4 of a thousandth. So, so we've managed to achieve with the milling machine and no special, um, no special uh, precautions um, a gauge block that is within 0.4 of a thousandth uh, and, and length which is pretty good. Now that doesn't actually matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is because we can very easily take care of any errors in the length of our sign bar. So uh, let's go through um, just doing an angle. And the reason I'm going to do this is because frequently I've seen on the net uh, instructions on how to use a sign bar and the author goes into the maths and we're talking about trigonometry and signs and opposite and hypotenuse etc etc. Okay it's fine to know the maths but you don't actually have to. So we're not going to do any maths here. Let's, for example, say that we want to do an angle of 23 degrees. We can do it two ways. We can either look up our math tables or we can use a calculator. Uh, here are some old Cambridge four-figure math tables, 1946 edition. And I actually got these in 1964 when I was at high school. It's a long time ago. So we look up the sine of 23 degrees on, in the tables, and 23 is here. We take the first number, 23 degrees, 0 0.3907. So that is the sine of the angle that we want. We can also um, use a calculator, and we multiply that number by the length of our sine bar. So the, the gauge block height that we want is that 0.3907 times the height of our sine bar. And it can be in millimetres or inches. So if you're more comfortable with inches, if we had a, a 4 inch sine bar, we'd multiply 4 by 0.3907. In my case, we've got a 75mm 
sine bar, we multiply 75 millimeters by 0.3907, and we'll do that. So 75 millimeter, start again, 75 millimeter sine bar times 0.3907 is equal to 29.302. And it's as simple as that, and that's the height of our stack, our gauge stack. Now we can do all of this with a calculator rather than the tables. So we go back to our 23 degrees again. We get our calculator and we go sine 23. Let's put a bracket there, so we'll close that bracket. Equals 0 0.3907. 0 0.3907. Now let's assume that my sine bar um, was not 75 millimetres, but it was 75.1 because of uh, bad machining. So we multiply that by 75.1 by the sine, and that comes to times 75.1, and that will give us a stack of 29.34. So you can see that the diff that a 0.1 of a millimetre error in my sign bar, which is quite a lot, uh, results in 0.04 millimetres stack height. Right, let's quickly work out how we get our stack height, and we'll use this one, 29.30. We won't use the 2 because my, my gauge blocks don't go that fine. I know that I've got a 1.3, so we'll take 1.3 off of that, which leaves 28.0. And there is my 1.3. Um, so we now need 28. Now I know that I've got an 8, which will leave us with 20 to find. There's my 8, and that leaves us with 20, which is this one. So in this case, it's nice and easy. We've got three gauge blocks a 20, an 8, and a 1.3. So we'll give that a, a clean, bring it. And there's our, there's our stack. And that angle is 23 degrees, and it is as simple as that. So, to summarise, we multiply the length of your sine bar by the sine of the angle that you want. What could be easier? And we look up the sine of the angle in a set of tables, which are in all the engineering handbooks have those tables. They're also available on the net, or we use a $20 calculator. Alright guys, thanks for watching, good luck, have fun, see you next time.